Yes, indeed. It was just earlier on this year, Katowice 2021. These two teams faced each other in the quarterfinals and their VP put an end to Astralis and then went on to reach the grand final, if you remember. Well, here, Astralis looking a little different with Bobski in the mix. They're hoping that they can return that favor, that they can get revenge. And already this pistol round has opened up in a brilliant way. Man advantage for Astralis, Virtus Pro to look for some results down here towards short water and B. They're grouped up outside of the site, but Astralis, a lot of bodies here, a lot of players in the right place. Hugo, I'm going to let you deliver some of these moments as the B take looks like it's about to come in. Oh, Dupree got a spot as well. He saw them going back monster, so the info's there for Astralis. They've got quite the stack in this B site. Cleared on the barrel, though. Bubsky gets a headshot, and Magis doesn't get much more favored either. Buster, lovely little entries. He's been a clutcher at this event, but it, now he's doing the opening kills. VP can get a bomb plant. Astralis don't currently have a kit, but they're moving in quick, sneaking, and trying to get this round back under control. Three on three is Glaive from the heavens fires a shot down and you've got to watch out for zip yeah zip is getting close oh up in the face of the man in the site him and kicker do a bit of damage either way however these opportunities not quite Whoa. open to astralis oh. yet there's zip with the double and there's the openers that gets them back in glaive from heaven as well who is 10 points of health comes in with a big old double kill and astralis they're gonna get the pistol around here to open up overpass yeah right there's uh, there's no time for for losers in this one it's quarterfinals right now vp man you know this court they may have the land experience, Harry. They may have been to the grand final of a major, but no one is going to trump Astralis when it comes to those world stages, when it comes to the high pressure, when it comes to just five dudes sitting in a room and racking up 16 rounds. Yeah, start I mean, for all the days. This is something, right? Even in that interview they did with HLTV, something that was very, very interesting to me was like coming into this event. If you remember, Glaive said publicly that, yeah, without a uh, you know a top AWP or without a dedicated AWP, we're going to struggle. Well, Zip and Glaive then went and gave an interview saying, yeah. actually, we're not satisfied with just quarterfinals. Exactly. We want to try yeah. and make this a deep all run. So suddenly, you know, they've tasted the uh, the blood in the water, as it were, and they're hungry for more. They're bloodlust and they're remembering what winning feels like on the Astralis side. Hell, if they can get this deep without an AWP, who knows how far they could go with one in the future. Right now, it's a lot of real estate getting taken. Look at this deep smoke. Teams like Big even have a lineup for this exact smoke outside barrel that you could throw from B. Astralis at least had pop flashes to get their team through the short tunnel, but VP are now completely cornered out. That being said, VP, this is their bread and butter. They're not complaining. They love sitting in T-spawn. So let your kinder work mid with the Deagle. And the rest of your pistols can wait outside B to try and explode near the end of the round. Your kinder's been spotted. He's trying to close the gap. He's trying to find a kill here, but even if he doesn't, he's ready to go down con and join his team in this B bomb site. The first man in the uh, uh, firing line will be Dupree. They have one flash to deal with him, or do they want to save it for the B bomb site? Yeah, I mean, that's the uh, that's the awkward part, as it were, right? Like, you've only got this one bit of utility. You've got to put it somewhere. And I'm imagining oh. it will just be for the B play. I think your Kindar might just get churned up on his comp push. Look at this stack now. Majiska's just called it. Glaive's gone down lower. No kit, no need. This is not getting into a retake. Yeah, it really shouldn't, at least, right? You'd like to hope these pistols running into a stack. It should be a cleanup for Astralis, and it's looking like it. Here's the MP9 churning them up. Bubski making quick work of the B play, and Dupree's there to close it out. Astralis, they get that conversion. It was just pistols there for VP, so they've got the rifles coming out here and now. Yeah, um, you know, VP, they're already showing us what they often do, right? A very, very slow T side. I, I do like their overpass, though. I think this could be a really, really exciting series with the map we have, uh, the maps we have here today. It's a shame to see no Vertigo, no Ancient. But, uh, you know, with a classic decider of Inferno, who knows where the series could go. 2-0 for Astralis. This is the buy, right? We talk about the AWPs, Harry. We talk about the lack of primary or for Astralis. Well, they're up against quite the conundrum in Jame. He's already crossed playground. He's beaten the Molotov. Meanwhile, Magisk is pushed deep in middle, and the grenades are softening up future targets. He's yet to see them. He's got to be careful. Oh, he knows Shane could be in the back line, but Magis can't win his front fight. Yakinda gets out with 20 health and takes the man advantage. There's no trade available. Look at how far he peels back after that kill, and Glaive realizes it better than anyone. So long he goes, keeping the triple B, and now this, this is everything VP ever wanted in a gun round yeah. like this. No, it's very, very important that you get your Kindar getting these opening kills from the get-go, right? Glaive's going to cancel out that man advantage by dealing with Buster on the push at long. 
you still ease him back into a four on four. BP are fine with this. You know, they, they would have rather they uh, they didn't lose a man at long. But now they have the information. They're starting to group down towards B. There is still a three-man stack here for Astralis. They're putting a lot of onus on the Astralis side on just having this one player anchor down the A-bomb site. Virtus Pro left with 40 seconds, and it's all getting a little bit wild now. Utility lined up by your Kindar to try and smoke off heaven and give these guys on the short side a bit of an easier time. Jay trying to open up. Meanwhile, up in the toilets on the A site, Sanji's cut down. James does get one of these entries into B, but with just 20 seconds left, you've really got to go. You've really got to get a move on, and you're still in a two-on-two -two at this B bomb site. Yeah, the flank's even coming in if VP want to commit. 15 seconds, here they go. It's only Zip in the pit who can actually put a stop to this plant. He's waiting for the flashbang. He kind of covers the short side, and now it's just him. We'll bang through the sandbags, and Astralis find yet another retake here on the lower site. Nice try for VP again considering that was you know although it started strong in a five on four right astralis managed to hold b quite well they didn't rotate anyone off it was just glaive in the toilet that entire round and so a triple b stack is more than enough to keep vp on the edge Something that was interesting as well was heading into this game. Uh, we had that little interview out of your Kindar, and I, and I liked one of the points he touched upon. He said, like, the thing about our play style is it doesn't need confidence. It doesn't need us to be making these ballsy plays, right? When I think about VP, this is a team that, that really play that clock out. They really play a numbers game, right? It's very slow, very methodical. It, it's a very grueling style to play up against. And... It is one that, you know, we heard the likes of Olaf saying, look, man, players aren't doing the same ballsy things they were doing online. Well, VP is saying, look, we don't have to do ballsy plays. That was never in our wheelhouse. Here's a fast B play. Bit of a change of pace when they're just on this force. Is it going to give them the results? Blinder barrels a zip, but he's still alive, still fighting. Oh, and onto hey. the USP, lighting them up on the exits. It's looking like another Astralis round, 4-0. With Virtus Pro yet to really make a dead. Oh, this has got to feel good for Astralis, man. Feels like 2019 all over again. And yeah, you've got to watch out for those Astralis USPs. Glaive showed us that uh, just the other day at the end of the groups. And so, yeah, VP on the receiving end of Zips as well. The B sites have looked really good right now for Astralis, right? They, they haven't rotated off. They've had three here every single round from the get-go to the very bitter end. And VP are not getting too comfortable back into another gun round here and they do have the orb at least on both sides oh they're employing this five man boost is it going to catch anyone there's oh. not a heaven bound player oh. so oh. bobski jump oh. peeking not going to throw himself into danger and the boost is disassembled this has given a lot of time to dupree to get set yeah. up over here in middle he's now in a very forward position dupree They've given you room thanks to employing this boost. Is he able to capitalize? That's the question now. We're homed in. We're all in on Dupree oh, no. and Buster is as well. Dupree stocks tanking after that one. And a man advantage taken for VP to open up this round. It's how last gun round went though, right? And that didn't end too well. If Magis can try and equalize things and get out alive as Glaive did. Maybe there's still hope, but he hears a lot of steps and up back he goes to the toilet. This time, Astralis should be sitting 2-2. Glaive was heaven. Might have to rotate back up and help Majisk on this top site. Zip at least has the monster info with the scope and just getting played with right now by Kicker and his utility. Oh, there's the legs and Zip will grab the kill. Now it's Majisk in toilets and he gets another. 1v1s working wonders for Astralis and back to the site they go. Glaive did end up lower for a moment, but there's no one committing here for VP. Three Ts with not much util and now walking into a two-man hold. Majisk is even re-aggressing into the toilets, trying to hit this timing. And he has gotten past Sanji. Now, they should be calmed, right? The toilets was never cleared. They don't really know much about it. Sanji's gotten up into the site. But bear in mind, Majisk is still back in the toilets. He's dealt with Jame. The bomb's been dropped inside of A. And with just 10 seconds for Buster, he might have been good at clutches. This round is one that's a little too far gone. Astralis 5-0 and oh, continuing to find success and just not stopping. Stopping. It's flawless so far, not really showing any signs of changing in that regard. Once again, they go a man down and are able to recover. It feels like VP 
Bear in mind, Astralis have had a good few, a, a good few days now to get ready sure. for this matchup. I think they're very aware of what they're going up against, right? Like with, uh, think about Na'Vi at this event. I think one of the things that's made Na'Vi so scary is they are playing, especially on their T sides, a bit of a different... Finals is not enough. We have yeah. higher expectations. We have higher aspirations. I mean, something else that was brought up in that same interview was how, you know, the contracts for Astralis are obviously running out yeah. fairly soon and how the future is kind of uncertain for these guys for the first time in a while. Um, and in the interview, they said, we don't know who's going to be on the next iteration of Astralis. So that's like... Uh... up. We're back into the action. VP, they are broken once again. And Glaive seems to be orping frivolously. Popsky tried his hand at the wall bang here on these comm players. Very aware as to what VP are attempting to run here. They know that con control has been taken and now hangs in the balance. Short water as well, secured by VP. So they've got a lot of presence down here towards this B side. They've got good options as well to rotate at the drop of a hat. Thanks to this connector control. What do they want to do with it? You see players making their way out through middle, but this bomb is still waiting outside of monster. I'm getting the impression that this is destined to be a B play, what with connector and short taken. And so we will see Jamin Sanji starting to lean towards this side of the map, especially with uh, Buster making this decision to give up middle and Ooh. rejoin the monster players. It is looking like VP have got their mind made up. If there's one bomb site they haven't been able to get into, though, it is this one. Dupree flash forward and Yakinda's good to trade at least. That's a gun given to an armored man and a dangerous one at that. Astralis into a, an immediate four on four and they'll hold off. Still have a good bit of utility to keep VP out. And on the flip side, it's not quite as favorable for this T half. They've got one flashbang. Getting into the B side without smokes, that's going to be a difficulty. Although you, they might come to you first. Zip again, re-aggressing. And Astralis just going for this info. They've spotted a couple of players outside Beam. And Chisk is going to confirm that as he kills Jane coming up connected. But there's more where that came from. But Chisk, lovely spray. Kick it will trade, but I don't think it's going to change the round. 10 seconds and Astralis are already here. Yeah, Kicker dies crossing, and Glaive is there to lock in the round. Great responses out of Astralis, man. Like, they had uh, they had a piece in place to, uh, to uproot and uncover that VP game plan at every single turn. The players in B were constantly applying pressure. That made VP start to doubt themselves and look elsewhere, and so it forces them back up into Magisk at the top of Con. Yeah, and think about some of that solo A play that Astralis have had in this game, because it's been VP with four or five players have been most of these rounds. Astralis have, you know, they had Dupree push uh, playground on that five stack boost. We've had Glaive deep wrong. We've had Majisk fighting middle and party, keeping that info and keeping the stack down on lower. VP haven't really caused any problems to this mid info. So Astralis have enabled stacks round after round, and now they're starting to get aggressive. Now they're feeling themselves. Majisk takes down Sanji with a flash through connector, and Dupree's pushed up on long, a messed up spray though is not a pretty picture for Dupree four on four VP at least drag it back kicking and screaming yeah and there's a point where VP have got to get one of these rounds right they keep finding even man scenarios they keep finding openers even in a lot of them and they still haven't been able to get them over the line this time in a four on four thanks to getting that trade on Dupree you're hoping if you're Virtus Pro this is the round where you can try to bring one home for the boys and stack it up outside of B again. Kicker getting flashed in, trying to take some room. The rest of VP up here in middle. They don't have connector though. And so even though Kicker is pressuring this B site and getting away with kills, this bomb is still going all the way back through T spawn. It's a little bit weird right now. It is a fake at the B site. The bomb rejoining with the rest of the gang up here in middle. They still don't know what's going on in Connector, and so we've still got Bubsky in this position who could uproot the round. He is getting wrapped by Kicker, but as it stands, he's in this little <gasps> golden Hurting. zone where he's ahead of the flank, and he's in between these players pushing A. He catches Kicker, can't quite find the double, can't get past Yakindar, who's opened up into the A site. Magisk now boosted up. They've put a lot Whoa. of faith in getting this boost kill. He holds it for a moment and delivers the two on two over. Now just Glaive with this AWP and with your Kindar still fighting in the Whoa. site. Glaive's going to be hard pressed to get these kills. VP. They might be on their way to their first round here and now. Yeah, nice reset to wrap back to the toilets. 
Glaive tapping it. They're going to swing wide, and Buster's ready to get the kill. VP, there they go, converting around. It was about time. Very, very scary with that flank from Bubsky as well, especially after he heard the con play. You would have loved a double out of him, but Yakinda's really the guy saving that one on top of Buster, getting that 180. And getting VP into the bomb site in the first place, it's going to be another buy, at least from Astralis. They have a bit more money left in the coffers. But yeah, VP on the board. It was about time, Harry. Finally, an A round going their way. A lot of lower takes have not been as nice. And again, Astralis, as we go back into a gun round, they are not waiting. They are not hesitating. Magisk pushed up in the party, uh, the playground rather, looking for early information. And again, all this does, if you don't see anyone, it keeps your numbers at B. It keeps the eyes on the prize. And we still have Glaive in middle as well, who can come down connector and cut off more rotates. Got to watch that boost, though. Yeah, VP are going to attempt it, right? This is something Astralis should be cognizant over. You know they're going to have numbers here at the B site. Wow. Oh, Zip mollied out. And Jame going to extend those openers even further. B has crumbled before our very eyes. The Glaive and Magisk up here on A, man. Oh. It's just a saving game. And even then, Virtus Pro won't let you attempt it. So this is a second round teed up for VP. What, and, a, what you know, the, Sorry, yeah, I was going to say, this yeah. is what we say about this team a lot, right? Like, every one of their games becomes a war of attrition. When you play Virtus Pro, you better be ready for a four or five hour best of three, right? Yeah. This is what these guys are good at. They kind of wear you down. They break you down until you, uh, until you start to make mistakes that maybe you're not used to making. Yeah, it leads me nothing against a team like this. Like They are the comeback kings of, uh, of this region. And, you know, I, I love that idea from VP as well. They always come up with little cool gimmicks. But one of the big problems with boosting on B short, B water, is that you just sometimes can't see anyone if they're not barrels and not pillar. Like, there's no kills there, and you don't want to wait forever. VP, they force the kills. They boost. They see no one. Then we have that molly down monster. Right before that molly comes in, a flash goes over the top of Monster, four blind zip. So his position is no, is not just mollied, but he can't see that he's on fire as well. He burns fully, crispy in the fire at Monster. Uh, and then VP just, you know, throw another flash in, they push off the back of it. That's a really cool idea. They get the boost, they force a kill, and then they commit. It actually deals with one of these heavy B rounds that Astralis have had, you know, consistently on the CT side. Three guys there again, denied this time. And VP are onto a winner. Two rounds in a row. That's going to break the money. These man advantages. He'll be the one taking a lot of the opening fights. And if he's winning those out, that's where Jame and the rest of the squad can do their best work. Ooh. Once again, a bit of util down here towards B. Astralis fully stacking this side of the map and trying to take map control away. This is info that VP have, thanks to Kicker be able to hold on to this monster control oh, that, this is like a fake right now astralis are falling for it they're still stacked lower that would have been the info zip and glaive look like they wanted to push up but they they call it off and if they committed with vp flashed out that might have been the info the guns and what could fall in the round but instead astralis they don't know what's going on it's very quiet vp are moving up a long and as things get quiet on b astralis have made those rotations so we're okay for now Safe in the bomb site with a bit of information on Majisk. And he's got the one gun in the round. He's even pushed up. This is now in no man's land. He needs something big. And Majisk provides a double kill before Jane denies and gets one with the orb. Now, the guns, as said, are lost. But Astralis still have deg armor. If VP can commit now, they're walking into the stack. Yeah, you know, there's still 40 seconds left. VP are not a team that look at that and go, all right, boys, we got to get a move on, right? They're still looking at this as, yeah, there's about 28 seconds of play left in this round here and now. So they start to make their way into water, trying to wrap the monster's side. They pick the safer of the two options with Astralis sat back passive in the site. Regardless, the rotations are coming in. Astralis is stacked here with these Deagles and armor. And Glaive has opened the round up by removing Kicker. James and Sanji, their work's cut out for them. James trying to carve a path into the site and now getting that bomb down. But are they ready for Bobski? Oh, close! The Deagle delivers wow. death swiftly to Virtus Pro. And the four spy works wonders for the Danes. They steal a seventh round back. And a lot of props has got to go to guys like Majisk and Bobski there for putting up the multi kills to make that round happen. Yeah, Bobski's having a banging game to begin today. And that's that's a lovely feeling, right? It, off, it often felt like this guy was just being left out right off the back of Mad Lions, sitting on the bench forever, never getting to play, never getting to you know be with the big boys. And well, 
you know, we all we all wanted him on the roster for a reason. He showed us so much promise in the last couple of years, especially on some of his previous Danish teams. So, yeah, finally showing us that on LAN as well. 11 and 4. Nice double kill for Magisk on long. And Astralis, man, they're like they're like a beehive, Harry. They're just swarming the Queen Bee. The Queen Bee being the round, wherever they need to go to pick it up, they will. Again, just instant rotate down lower as VP commit and an eco round one. Oh, yeah, an attempt at the mid peak out of Glaive. It's a times like that in the head to heads versus an incumbent yeah. AWPer on the other side that maybe you see some of these problems, right, emerging for Glaive. Obviously, having to don this AWP a hell of a lot. Magisk still, though, is doing all he can to keep this in an even odds, right? He's left us in a four on four and is still holding on to these long toilets. Will this decision out of Magisk to stick around and keep fighting be something that proves to punish Astralis oh, yeah. in the long run? That flashbang is brutal and it allows Buster to extend the advantage back in favor of VP and it removes a lot of the pressure that Magisk was providing. The info is now gone up towards this A site, and so Astralis start to gamble. They move two up to A, but if you look at that bomb, if you look at VP, if you know anything about VP, you would know that this might not ever be an A play, and I don't ever think it was being considered to be one either. The bomb goes back, it gets retrieved, now we're starting to join up with these guys at B. Yeah, Bobski got mollied back as well. He really wanted to get that information, but he got tagged on it. Now Buster knows he's close. And so VP, they've got a free bomb site. Astralis are gambling on A right now. And they're finally realizing what's going on. 20 seconds, the smokes, the mollies, they're all landing down lower. Astralis don't want to give this a go. I thought they were triple stacking to save. Instead, they're throwing bodies at the problem, but it's just creating more problems and more bodies. Nice grenade, two HP on Sanji, but the plant comes in. Spam, not connecting a kill. And even though damage is done, Astralis don't know how much. Man, if only they did, right? Bobski's still going for this. Oh, oh kick out the timing here. Still gets it. Spotted by Dupree, but just a tiny bit too late. And Dupree, he watches his teammate cut down before his very eyes, haunted by his experiences at B. Dupree is out of there. Will he get away with the AK with Buster hunting? That's a question. That's a big old question mark. It's looking good. He might have just found a timing. Regardless, Virtus Pro up onto a third. They put a stop to that little B yeah. stack there. They start to take the reins of this game because now they've broken the money of Astralis. So suddenly they're eyeing up, you know, grinding their way back in and actually making this a good T side after all. Yeah, that's what T sides are right? and nowadays, right? They are grinds. You know, if you're not getting it starting strong out the gate, if you're not getting the pistol, if you're not converting, you know, we see these CT force buys so often win. It's just about breaking the money. You can be down 7 0. You can still be winning maps dominantly. Like, that's the counter strike we're seeing right now. And, you know, VP are at the, at the forefront of it, they're at the helm. So, yeah, it's all about just winning your rifle rounds, winning them cleanly, and taking guns away when Astralis try and save. I really did think that round would be an attempt to the save. The fact that it's not shows how keen and how convinced Astralis are oh. that they're winning. And welcome back, the DHL yeah. fan cams. It's great to see all you people out of your homes to, uh, right now and tuning in. IEM.gg forward slash fan cam if you want to get in those DHL fan cams. I've missed seeing all these wonderful faces. It's great to see, right? We're, we might be back on land. We're still missing the crowds, though, so you can hop in those fan cams if you want to try and you know, relive the glory days, really yeah, get excited get for I'll it. I'll tell you that much. It feels like a crowd. Sometimes they really are getting loud. Um, yeah, you can join your, your, your team's favorite as well. So nice little biased fan cam. Nothing wrong with that. Support the home crowd. VP, though, they're warming in, Harry. That's exactly what we're seeing in front of us. Dupree, down connected with the one AK. All right, maybe a backstab here, but how soon do VP go? They look ready to commit. Yeah, they look like they want to get a move on quickly in this round. And this would be a change of pace that Astralis are just not used oh, to. No. Oh, Glaive shooting Dupree in the back of the head. He wanted the gun all for himself. <laughs> now Zip has secured oh. one kill at least, but he's naded out in the B site on barrels. And this round is slipping apart for Astralis. Just one man in B. VP aren't even moving in yet. To give you an idea of how <laughs> grimy these guys are, it was all looking like it was going to be a fast B. They get some openers. Things are looking up. And now they slow it right down again. Astralis haven't doubted themselves, though. They're still stacked up in B. Magisk is here, the only guy with any HP and this Deagle. And so with Bobski baiting them in, how much can Magisk accomplish in this position? 
Yeah, the plant attempted, but just might jump up and try and deny this. No actual cover right now. Oh, he can't get the kill. Only damage, one HP on Jame, and Magis now has to try and finish the job elsewhere. There's too many targets, there's too much cover, and Yakinda's got too much health. Glaive might have to save the AK, four HP himself, and VP. That is one way to pick up a round. Uh, yeah, you know, Astralis knew what was going on. And when you're against VP, you're not falling for those recommit question marks where, you know, a team gets a kill and they go quiet and you go, oh, are they rotating? It's been 30 seconds. We haven't seen anyone. Are they up on A already? Astralis don't fall for that. It's so VP to just wait, go quiet and recommit later in the round. So that's exactly what they do. And even with Astralis all there, I don't think anything, anything was ever going to happen unless Magis got that kill on Jane. Yeah, it is a bit of a sad moment when you 99 someone with yeah. the Deagle, man. Oof. Like, man, just fully expecting that kill to come in. Um, yeah, you could see how much it threw him off when it didn't. I think the funny part was he was he was waiting for to kill the cover, and he was so surprised that there was actually no cover for that plot. There was zero cover. Like, he could have gone over immediately and, and took that kill, but why would he know that? You know, there should be cover, really. And it's, it's that exact fact that, you know, gets in his head. BP. We're talking about breaking the money, Harry. Well, forget the force buys. Here we are. Just that saved AK. Oh, I like how Magisk is using it, though. Sanji. Getting aggressive. Now, Sanji's holding. And of course, Sanji's holding. Magisk has not done this once. And yet, there they are, waiting for you to give it a go. Yeah. This is the beauty of this VP squad, right? Once they get their first <gasps> few rounds, oh! Oh, they... Uh, they really start to get in your head and it becomes like just a series of mind games, it feels like. You're always wanting to get aggressive. You're wanting to try and figure out what their game plan is, where they're leaning. But when they hold these defaults, they're so good at it. They're so punishing. And a lot of the time you end up making problems worse trying to get this info. A five on three, just vanilla pistols to beat. And this is looking like a VP round all day long. Yeah, I've never been more assured in the fact that nothing can go wrong here. Like literally nothing can go wrong. It's just USPs, VP grouping up, 40 seconds, enough time. They cycled the AK out as well. So that's not down connector. And they're still considering it. But Astralis are doubled up on toilets close getting closer by the second. Jane needs to watch out. Does he have cover? Yes. Sanji swings wide and deals death to the USP's kick. It actually takes both kills, in fact. And Bubski is a long way from home. It's VP onto a fifth here. And, you know, Bubski, he could go around the world, try and save the AK, but really he's just looking to put a swift end to this one. Try and take a, a kill with him, perhaps. I find it kind of funny because, like, you know, for the longest time, back when Astralis were dominating and we were deep in the Astralis era, one of the comments used to be, oh, man, you know, it's almost boring. Like, you show up to an <laughs> event and you know who's going to win. Yeah. You know you know, Astralis are going to just play this, like, almost robotic level of Counter-Strike. Well, you know, VP kind of exemplify a, sure. a very numbers-based style of CS, one that I think is even more, like... Uh, even more number leaning than that of Astralis, right? While Astralis were great with utility, they were great with the calls. VP do play this game like they are some kind of probability counting robot, yeah, right? Like and auto they, chess. Yeah, exactly. And uh, and I think for that reason, they're they're kind of like the villains of Counter Strike right now, in a <laughs> sense. They do just play the this, this purebred style, this back to basic style, and they're so damn good at it that they're able to uh, even make these big comebacks happen versus squads like Astralis in their element on land. Yeah, all the more power to them if they can, you know, keep it going. As I said, we know it's a grind. We know it's a long game, like 7-5, not scary scoreline at all for VP. In fact, Astralis should be more worried because this gun round is pretty weak and the results of this half rest on this one buy. We saw that little, little save attempt or the, the AK juggle for Sanji on the replay. Couldn't throw it out the map. Didn't know you couldn't throw it there, but uh, either way, it wasn't a worry. No one grabbed it for Astralis. They would have loved a little more money for nades, for kits, for even armor on that AWP. Instead, they are beggars, not choosers. Glaive getting boosted at long, going for a wide peak, but no one's out just yet. Just behind the rock is Buster. Glaive is very patient, as is his opponent. No one going to commit Buster. Walking up the close wall instead. Could sneak underneath the AWP. Could find an angle. Could find a start, but Glaive denies it. Lovely little flick downwards, and now VP, they've lost all their A control. 
Oh, <laughs> Dupree. Okay. One step ahead of you, your kinder. One step ahead. And two. And you know, what the hell do you do? Yeah, this is, and this is like one of the problems that you start to encounter. And Same. this is why we say guys like Ikindar is so important. If you lose him early, you lose that hammer. You lose that explosive presence that you have. Um, with losing all your A info, it leaves you with nothing else but this B commitment. Jame getting the opener, looking like it's enticed them. They are looking okay. like they want to commit. Oh. There is six oh. seconds as they're going in. The bomb plot denied, and Dupree has saved the day. They try to make a last. Second Bye. hero play. But Astralis do hold on. Eight up on the board now. The AWP saved on Jame at least. Yeah, yeah. A wild round that's down to the final few seconds on the clock. And for a moment, it looked like VP were going to get a bomb plant out of that. I respect it, man. Like, committing with 10 seconds, that's ballsy, you know. Uh, James getting that trade, and, and then he checks his watch. He's like, oh, no, the oven's on. It's Jame time. I've got to go. Got to get out. Bye, Astralis. Have fun. So he saves the orb, although money is yet to be a problem for VP. Lovely little B hold for Astralis. It needed to happen after that five on three opener. And Dupree, good read for the boost as well. Something the VP have been using to get these advantages on this bomb site. This round, we have a double con setup. So really no A info other than Glaive's orb. And if it gets pressured, if it gets pushed back down into the doldrums, that's A open for business. Sanji's walked through connector with this smoke down. Magisk knows what's happening. He's heard all of it, but Sanji's doubling back, and the smoke fade favors him. Magisk is gone. Now Glaive is trapped between two, and he doesn't know where to look. Yeah, Glaive is in an incredibly rough spot, and yet Whoa. somehow he's been able to <laughs> elude capture, hitting this perfect timing to get out of connector. He knows that he's lucky to still be alive, and he knows that a big hole has been open all round long over here oh, at no. the long side. Oh, no. However, he won't be ready for Buster, waiting patiently, tucked in at long already. No information for Astralis. They do not know where VP are. And yet still, they start to gamble these rotations up into the A site. Wow. VP with the bomb on James back outside of long. The rest of Vertus Pro faking a B play with utility, pouring in over the top. Zip holds on. And has there, any, uh, has there been a call for rotations? It doesn't look like it. Still committed to this three-man A-hold. Glaive has told the boys to hold their own, and Dupree will do exactly that. The long play shut down. Just your Kindar, and he can't deal with Glaive yet. Finally gets the better of him, but with only 10 seconds left and a triple stack still to get through, it's looking like a ninth on the board for Astralis after all. My God, what a call for Astralis. Whoever makes that decision to stick back at A is an absolute champion. They do not fall for that. What a fake as well. Like VP are double long with the bomb. They're triple B, man. They've got the majority of their team faking that B bomb site. Kicker gets out through Monster. If he gets the kill, maybe, but uh, I think with Zip still back down there, spots him, mows him down, and makes the, uh, calls the info like, guys, there's only one monster. That's the weakest B play I've ever seen. Watch your top. And Dupree doubles up. The bomb gets dropped. Glaive holds his own, and it's a perfect round for Astralis. What a read to not only make that early rotate, but to not panic and fall back to B when VP threw that util. Nine rounds on the board, looking for double digits, and it's VP buying full. I love Glaive with this AWP as well. Like, it's almost like he knows, right? I'm not going to be able to beat guys like Jame in a direct head-to-head, -head, but if I play these little gimmicky angles, if I can get one kill out of the AWP, then that can be a difference maker in and of itself. I really think Glaive deserves a lot of props for how he's been able to pick yeah. this AWP up and, and still look so good with it. Especially when I think the majority of people were expecting to see Dupree on this gun, right? From yeah. what we've seen from Astralis in the past with devices taken leave, you know, it, it has been that case, but we've seen it all over the place for Astralis. Kicker, meanwhile, B pick attempted, but he's not going to be able to spray. Zip gets that kill somehow, some way. I couldn't tell you in the boost. Oh, they count beautiful as well. They counter-boosted Astralis. They decide, look, man, we've had enough of playing this on VP's clock. We've had enough of them dictating oh, the flow of no. this. And so they boost down at B to strip players away from the ranks. Now it becomes clear that this was looking like an A play. Astralis, okay. they've lost Glaive. They've lost Magisk. Astralis having to rotate players up. VP moving in for the kill. But it's taken them a long while to get into position. This has given a lot of time to Astralis to get these bodies occupying the 
sight. Bobski in the truck smoke and now moving through bank as well is another player oh. from the Danish oh. ranks. Yakindar versus Bobski. This fight decides a hell of a lot and the bomb is now dropped. Cut loose on truck. More room to do pre. Gets away with a kill and James is not being given fights. He needs to take matters into his own hands and is there time for a bomb no. plant? There's not. It's a looted James. 10-5 to close out a begin here. This comeback has got to start on their CT half of overpass, their map pick in this series. Yeah, it's rare to see VP having troubles on the T side. Five rounds is enough, however, if you can find a pistol or at least get in the way of the conversions for Astralis. So let's see how things begin. With Astralis now getting to direct the flow, direct the pace, and it's a lot quicker than VP's. Right up connector, Yakinda can clearly hear steps as they go towards the top side, but Kick is trying to peek him from the door. Whoa, gotta watch out, trying to run back now. Astralis are playing with their food up and down, back and forth, questions on where they're committing. It will be A. And it's only James currently, but he's called for his first rotation. Kicker going to begin to move up. And so VP, they do have the kit. They have the smoke. They can play the retake. But right now, they are making, they are making the perfect read. Four players going right back up onto this site. Oh yeah, Kicker swinging in, dead at the hands of Bobski. But there are a lot more VP players still occupying this site and occupying your mind if you're Astralis. Sanji with this USP won't let them in just yet. It's going to take Bobski to overwhelm him. Yakindar dead as well. Bobski having a hell of a pistol round here. A hat trick so far, and he's still got more to offer in this pistol. For Buster and Jane, they've got to embark on a very unlikely round here a two on four and a bubski that they've got to stop in his tracks oh. they can't do it he's on for the ace is it another one added to the tally it is bubski all five to find 11 for astralis and open up this second half in one hell of a way for the danish crowd oh that does feel beautiful doesn't it wow what a uh, what a start to a half bubski just hit them with the ie claw in the second <laughs> half man Whoa. Oh, and they were not Harry. They certainly weren't. VP, I mean, they had everyone there, mate. They had every right to win that round, every chance to take it away, but instead, Bobski. It just felt like they weren't even acknowledging him. Yeah. Like, I don't get it. I don't know how he got away with like two of those five kills, but he did. Beautiful stuff with the Glock as well. Okay, well, I said VP have to win a pistol or get in the way of the conversions. Neither of those are apparent. It's USPs. They want to buy soon. Nothing wrong with that. Stack in middle with a flashbang, but Astralis are already up in front of it, and Majisk and Glaive are maul mauling them right now in middle. Five kills between the two. No problems. One death. And Astralis, they convert. 12 to what 5. What is, is going it. on, man? This is very exciting. Having oh, Astralis in this form... Oh, it's getting me it's getting me excited, Hugo. I mean, this is the VP we know and love. It's not Sanji, but it's Buster dropping an orb to Jame and now playing no armor with his rifle. He'll even take the SMG. No armor over. MP9. Yeah, he swaps to Sanji. Good call. Definitely good call, right? You've got no armor. Play the worst gun. Uh, rather than you know force Jame on the, the glass orb himself. And here we go. So VP, you know, they wanted this early buy. What are they gonna do with it? They don't have the util to yeah. take that mid control, and so options aren't as available. Most notably, they wanted this early orb, right? So let's see if putting all that faith in Jame was worth it after all. He set up in connector. We saw Glaive doing this in the first half a little bit. We saw some of the problems it can present, right? If you lose short, if you start to get trapped in con, it can very, very quickly start to feel like a bit of a cage of your own making. And so Jane will get out of there early on in the round. Yeah, it's very similar to some of VP's T sides, this first default for Astralis. They're trying to find out where these cities are playing, what they've got in terms of weaponry. They know it's a buy here. It's just questioning on do they have the AWP or not. That info isn't apparent. And much as how Glaive was able to do so in the first half, Jane peaks connector, you know, shows his hand, and then gets a chance to leave. And that's because Astralis only have one man working this A site. He's eventually going to fall back group up with his team who are bringing the bomb up from lower and so astralis can recommit start to clear some space they've got this b control early they can leave bubski and if things go bad back down the connector into lower eventually 
30 seconds, though. Astralis don't have a lot of time to mess around. Bubsky's trying to sell this B-fake at the moment. This is mental. Like, you're trying to almost beat VP at their own game. Bubsky has been waiting for this challenge, and he's given it, taking a player out of the ranks at B. Oh, will VP oh, hinging with the idea. Do we rotate? Do we drop? Oh. And now they see the players in toilets. James is still here. He never rotated down. So a double hold in this A-bomb site. James AWP denies that bomb plot for oh. now. Oh, it does come down with seconds to spare, but Yakenda, a whirlwind of death in the A-bomb site. And just two players there shred through Astralis. The double kill from James Orp on players crossing gives a lot more room to Yakinda, who just comes in on that backstab and secures a round by, or sorry, four VP by fours. Yeah, that's insane. There's no way Yakinda should have gotten away with that, right? He got timed on his first fight. He was scoped up, and as soon as he left that angle, Astralis peeked in. I thought that was it. I thought that was their chance to a win with the smokes down, but lovely stuff out of Yakinda, just pivoting, taking and winning every fight he can. And he needed to, right? VP had to win that gun round if they want to actually be in their map pick in this series. Without it, it's going to be a wash. 12-6, still can be. Astralis have another buy round. No AWP. Even a Mac 10 on zip, that will keep the pace high as they go fast through middle. And look at this, they're even going to clear Yakinda. He's kind of trapped right now. He turns and he does at least take a one for one. Should never really have had that with his position. Leaves Jame alone on A, but even he doesn't have the info. He's being navigated Ooh, against on long. I love this out of Dupree, right? You, you've kind of got a bit of an idea as to where James has been, been leaning, right? You've seen him over the ward short a few times. You, you're worried about him in connector. You don't know where he is right now, but Dupree's got a lot of room thanks to this fast long control. Doesn't know about it yet. There is a world where he can hit one crazy timing to create opportunities here, especially if Zip gets the info, right? Now he is the guy with the bomb, so you don't really want him to get the info. That would probably cause you quite a few issues. Instead, he's going to go long and group up with Dupree. Without realizing it, Astralis have dodged this double connector setup. They're getting a bit more of an idea as to what's going on in Con now, thanks to Glaive. And he's still keeping the attention of Virtus Pro at this B bomb site. Oh, Sanji no. now leaving. No this is way. because of the pressure that Glaive has been applying down at B. And it's giving a lot of room to the rest of the gang for this A play. James just got the info that Glaive was leaving. Now they know the ruse is up. The jig is up, but a bomb plant's already coming in, and Dupree has taken an aggressive start down in CT. Astralis is so convinced that they made the perfect read, and of course they did. Knives out into the bomb site. Look at this play from Dupree. It's for him. Zip's even pushed up as well. He's about to get that info. Two CTs right in front of him. Zip needs to live. There's the orb getting cut down by Dupree. And Zip cornered as well. Will die, leaving Dupree in the clutch. 1v1 now. He's got Util. He's got the bomb for him. Nothing can go wrong. And Dupree won't fall for the fake. Kicker hunting him down and taking the frag away. Kicker keeping VP in this map, keeping them in this series, and saving them in the 1v1. That was almost a perfect round for Astralis. Yeah, that's a, a feels bad man moment for Dupree as well, right? Two out of the three kills needed. Almost goes on to win it in the 1v1, but he can't fall back from the, that position, right? Even though he buys into the idea that it was fake, that the bomb wasn't being stuck, he doesn't want to be too far away when it comes to try and deny it. And so Kicker, quick reaction to hunt down Dupree, plays that 1v1 perfectly finds VP another round. And this is why, right? We've seen these VP fan cams a couple of times now. No one's bothered to go, ah, oh, well, the VP boys, they're done. When you're a VP fan, yeah. you know that you're in it for the long haul. Absolutely. You're in it for the long games. And so they're still hoping there's a path to a comeback yet to be found by Virtus Pro. Yeah, never, never count them out. Don't make that mistake. It will come back to haunt you. And yeah, VP are from Pretty, two Deagles, and even a Galil in this gun round if you want to call it that. James early up is paying off for the moment. Or you, you hope it to be. He's had that info on A a lot of the time. In that one round, you kinda get a, a triple kill. James was there. kicker has been tagged up early quite a lot. I think he might have been dinked through the, uh, the warbang from Zip's Deke, but we'll see. 
James posted on A and Astralis. This is a nice fast round. It is a walking round. James doesn't have the info, but they're about to explode. He has no idea how close on the flower, but they already are. Yakinda swings and it's a hit and a miss. Dink onto Magis. There's the flick from James, but Molly back into the bank will give Astralis the plant at least. Yeah, this is nice, right? You forced them out of the site. You oh, made them Dupree. respect you a little bit. Dupree almost perishing in that Molotov. Spamming the boost, and now they look to put Jame up in it. Jame has got to be the guy to accelerate this retake, to find the open, and they're putting a lot of faith in James Orb. And they won't actually decide to boost him up after all. They bail out of the boost. And so they're going to do this old school. All four players moving in together, CT and Bank, the two positions that you've got to worry about if you're Astralis. Bobski oh. with the lineup. Glaive's there to help out, and it's only Jane left. You know what his response is here. You know he wants to get away with the AWP. Astralis are trying to hunt him, trying to add insult to injury, and he oh. will die down in Bank thanks to the damage that Zip is able to get away with. 13 on the board for Astralis. They do it with that broken can buy all it takes is a few missed timings from jame yeah. on that awp and suddenly the doors are wide open yeah i think the thought process with that boost is you're about to go for it i like the bait the kicker does by spamming it and then they realize astralis is shooting back through the metal like if you boost up not only is jame gonna get headshot but that bottom player will get wall banged and won't get to play in bubsky as well if glaive didn't get that third kill off of dumpster i'm convinced bubsky spray would have found it that was a lovely little double from him in the post plant and astralis converting a must win round Yakinda's left with the only gun in this one. Okay, Astralis. Not giving VP the room back into this half after some successful gun rounds. Looking to take it away ASAP. Early B control. Astralis looking hungry, looking do like Dupree wants to walk right through. We have that Vitality-esque flash coming in towards the monster Dupree. It's going to be too late. Oh, he steps. Now it comes in. Dupree is going to dodge it. No, fully blinded. Jay peeking in deep with a double. And that is lovely. Lots of bodies litter the monster and lots of weapons as well. But Astralis make sure the VP don't pick up squat. Yeah, they're going to be able to hold these guns for now. Well, you just commit with the B play, even after seeing the flash lined up by Sanji, a barrels player, Jame there as well. You may be starting to get a little bit paranoid as to whether or not B is stacked. Your Kindar hits this timing on the Comrap, and Magisk is on the receiving end. Astralis, this was meant to be a simple round. This was meant to be clean, and yet the utility, the quick thinking out of Virtus Pro, it's made it scary. It's made it troublesome. They've given them room though, right? This bomb plant's going to be totally doable. All they need to do is kill this first pit player. No real weaponry or utility for VP past Yakinda. Sanji's been spammed out. The line is there and they almost take the second Yakinda just living and they never knew about Buster. Do they have that info? Zip seems cautious, seems to be considered. What? It, but it doesn't matter one bit. Through the box, Buster never even saw him. Zip was never even given a chance at that kill. I don't know. I do not know how he just <laughs> did that. But, but it saved VP. It's kept them going. It's put eight up on the board. Woo. An impossible shot from Buster and some fine deeg work, flash work out of Sanji and Jame to create those openers in the first place. Let's see this. Look at oh, this. Okay, he got no. to see the head for a second, oh. but still incredibly fast from Buster. Lights out. Bye bye. Oh, and now VP are trying to give the illusion that they're taking liberties. They've deep mollied middle to try and deny any info here and make Astralis worried as to the possibility that VP are in park. Astralis now are taking a lot of time clearing out mid when this is free real estate. This is wasting precious seconds. It's given time to these players in Khan to get set up and Yakindar will deliver the opener to VP. Astralis, there's no way to trade this. In fact, he's going to take even more out of the round. Bubsky's AK will leave us in a three on four, but it's cancelled out thanks to Kicker and the numbers are now starting to dwindle for the Danes. That was the gun, right? That was the hope in the round. He gets one, but that smoke fade on Monster, not good for him. And now Astralis, oh, not an easy round to get anything done. Glaive's got util plus this SMG, but hardly an entry weapon and no bomb yet either. So even if you get the kills, you're not going to be in consideration for winning the round. That being said, getting the kills is a tough ask. Kick at spamming monster, seeing Glaive, trying to flash a peek, trying to get back in, grab a gun, that he's done. 
Uh, Buster's still got him locked in on the left side. Double face. Buster with one. Play for the trade. But Kicker keeps the round under wraps. Nine for VP. And they're fighting tooth and nail for this one, Harry. Again, it's not pretty. It's not clean. You're not thinking about the comeback yet. But that's how VP do it, man. Sneaking in. And then suddenly you're wondering where it all went so wrong for Astralis. Now, before that fact, a pistol round. And so double digits is on the horizon. Yeah, I mean, Astralis have been doing everything in their power to not give these eco rounds a go, right? Like they've been they've been taking some pretty aggressive purchase decisions. Hero rifle in the last, before that, a, a cobbled together four spy. You know, you've really tried to keep the pressure on. You've really tried to keep VP on the back foot. But now you do just have to take a pistol round. You do just have to take an eco. And at least it's nice and quick for crying out loud. VP cut down Astralis on the Glock B rush. And they now have double digits in the bag. Just three between them and Astralis. When you think about the context that this was a 6-0 and star, a 10-5 half with the pistol going the way of the Danes, yeah. suddenly you see just how well Virtus Pro have been able to keep afloat and keep themselves in this one. As we say, a bit of a signature with this BPT. Nothing new, Harry, nothing new. 12-5 to 5 to 13-10 to 10. from seven rounds difference to three. It's closing very quickly. Here's a gun round. No op for Glaive. No need on the T side of this map, though. Jame is always going to be a problem. Unfortunately, there's not much you can do but grit your teeth and bear it. Maybe a fast B approach again. Astralis, they showed this in the Glock round. It was nice and quick. VP already forgotten about it, but they're going to get re-reminded. Flashing through the smoke. Kicker, he hears everything going on. The barrels molly is big, and Sanji tries to help him out. He does get that trade, at least keeping it in a 4-on-4. Four four. The line is there for Buster. No one covering from short side, and so Astralis can barely make it into the bomb site. They're going to hunt down Sanji. Ooh. SMG does get a dink, and right now, VP are not in hot water yet. They're not in trouble. The orb is only just getting in position, but Dupree does deny it, and Astralis keep this round under consideration. Oh, yeah. Yeah, both players oh, occupying no. short. Astralis don't actually know your Kindar's there, and yet still they're wrapping CT yes, and going knows. up to A. Look at VP trying to stay one step ahead of this one. Buster moving up into this A site is already wrapped up con. Will he be ready for the aggressive Dupree who's passing him in the toilets? They have sailed by one another like ships oh, in yeah. the night. Buster now could disrupt this site hold. Or or he could get wrapped onto. It's a bit of a coin toss for Buster. Oh. Your Kindar's coming up con, but he won't ever know about Dupree. Surely this is weird. Dupree could have found the mother load of timings here. Both kills on his plate. Dupree with the first and never gives your Kindar the peak. Now your Kindar left in the clutch. Smoke oh. on the bomb. Damage done by Bubski and still not giving the fight over. Astralis get 14 after all. The rock plot, Harry. The rock plot. Did he, he rock thought, plot yeah, him? He was confused. He was smoking the no. truck. He was looking on the truck. He didn't know where it was gone. The bomb was ticking inside of the rock. There's a little texture you can plant on there. I never thought that would confuse I didn't, a pro. I didn't think you would see someone pull that out either That's in the program. Strat, yeah. That's an MM strat, and Astralis just picked it up. And the best part about that, with Buster clearing short, he tells you, Kinda, mate, short's clear. I've walked all the way up. <laughs> Come on by. And Dupree makes that call for Bubski to watch out from short. So that player, Buster, that could have backstabbed Bubski, is instead. Look, look at cool. the rock plot. Look Beautiful. at it. Beautiful. Oh, it's so grimy. You do that to try and like get in the head of MG players. Never mind. Up against Virtus Pro. You oh, well, to open up this round, we've already had it start by James Orp striking a player out of connector. It's Glaive on the receiving end of that. Astralis, undeterred by this AWP today, is still moving in through long. A lot of the time when James has been peaking con, they've been given a lot of room here. But this time, your Kindar is posted up and holding on to this long position. Not keen to repeat mistakes of the bygone rounds. Oh. Your Kindar, is he ready what? for this? Madge has gone the boost. Will somehow get away with that kill and close up this round back into a four on four after all. Oh my God, Astralis, don't do it again. They were doing it all CT side long, going down a man, not trading and somehow still picking up the win. Can't be doing it on the T side as well. Getting that bomb and going back down lower. Majisk is very damaged for health. VP 2-2 two, two right now, they're split in pieces. James Orping the top side even so. So if Bubsky can try and keep him there, 
That could be big, but no utility. He wants to join his team instead. 30 seconds. Sanji at the monster. Perfect gun for incapacitated players. Majisk is like a lamb to the slaughter of the MP9. We've even started to get rotates back down B as well, leaving Jame alone in the toilet. Kick it's gonna flash Sanji for a peek. There's nothing there. 15 seconds, that's misinfo. Here yeah. comes Astralis. <laughs> They're coming. Oh lordy, they coming. Do pre and zip with the openness, but that's wow. the bomb. Buster. Oh, we can't catch it the second time around. And so with just two seconds left to spare, the bomb plant comes in. Oh! But Buster, 10 pin bowling is in with the double. And now Dupree left to try and see it through. Hiding his way, stealing himself, has dealt with Buster on the jump up. And now the pesky Jane left to find the most elusive of men. And it's Dupree, a mass effect in the round. And Astralis up onto 15 after all. Oh dear, all the clutch rounds are coming out of these guys now. Dupree and Bobski having a light out game for Astralis. The two on four down on B ending up top and right there and then. Oh, it's so exciting, man. This is the Astralis we're getting. This is the Astralis we're getting. Yeah, they're not satisfied with quarterfinals, Harry. And, they and you can see why. You they can might see why. Not need to be. Look oh. at this fight. We're back in after Dupree decimates VP on that B site. VP's money falls apart. It's in shambles. An SMG, a couple of little digs, and five Danes that want to ruin your day. Right, so often, Jame has been a cornerstone of getting these kind of rounds over the line. He's backing Con again with the Deagle, and he's facing players to open up the round. They know about him now. Are we going to see Astralis try to clamp down on this Con control? If they do, there's two players trapped in this position. Position for VP. Your Kindar's going to take this opportunity to get the hell out of there, but that does leave Jame in con all alone now. Yeah, they know about it. He's already done damage to Dupree, who now has that orb. Up he goes into the waiting arms of Majisk. A is now looking luscious for Astralis as they creep up on the short side. So do VP. They feel the same way. They're moving their men back into this uh, site as well. But as said, underarmed, undermanned. And still all the time in the world for Astralis to second guess, so they shall. I'm going back. Nice shot from Yakinda to catch Glaive. And that's Ooh. a gun. And that's more info. Astralis, if they're going B, they've got to go soon before the penny drops. Yeah, right. Because suddenly, while you had the pressure on A, while you had these three players trapped here, thanks to Glaive, you don't got that anymore. In fact, BP have gained the info that it's not an A play. Buster in the B site. His oh. Deagle has been good and is trying oh, to save okay. the day again. Buster not missing, not letting the in finally digged out by Dupree but he set his team up nicely to try and keep this map going to try and keep the dream of overpass alive Dupree's burnt out and Buster does enough for your kinder to go on and get it over the line oh you can just never count VP out in these rounds Harry that's twice now they've picked these up should not be happening the Deagle spam down a monster for Jamie other round this time able to convert it again on the B-bomb site and having that last second Molotov as well. Woo! Just the cherry on top. VP Deegs are a force to be reckoned with and Astralis are going to bring their own to the table. VP, just when you thought you were ready to close that overpass, start thinking about the second map of the series. They've given themselves a way back in. Yeah, and it's frustrating for Astralis, right? You see the look of frustration on their faces. They know that that was the easiest round they were ever going to have in this game to close it out, yeah. right? Now, VP, they haven't just kept it alive. They've set themselves up for rifles, at least. So Astralis are going to be grinding this game out now. And that is what it's going to start to feel like, as it often is when you play versus versus pro. I'm yeah. going to take a moment to just compose themselves. You know, it's only one round that you've got to get, but this one round can be the most elusive of them all. Very easy, does it? slow on the approach to the A-bomb site. And this was how they've gotten past Jane before, yeah. right? We remember that round where they snuck past him. And they were able to find success on the back of it. Now, is history destined to repeat itself? 
Jame up in this site this time. He's not looking to get dodged. He wants to play into this round, getting the information. Jame spotting the first and now playing with fire. Bubski, can he land the pre-fire? No, both players miss. It's Yakinda to open up and still fighting from long side. James even moving in to help him out. Oh, no. Time is also starting to become a problem for Astralis. They get the bomb down, but it's left on to Zip in a 1v3, a P250 and cancel out by kicker the game will keep on going Ooh. it stays afoot thanks to Virtus pro they hold on to the a bomb site a bomb plant for astralis at least pads out these bank accounts a little bit but not enough to look for a buy in this round yeah i feel like in every single anti-eco kick it's having around like he's having a 3k so you know that that's nice uh definitely can get out of control those pistol rounds you can see the bomb plant and suddenly it's all up in the air Instead, VP, I mean, you said it yourself, Harry, that was the hardest round that Astralis were, oh, sorry, the easiest round that Astralis were going to have to close this map. And, and this is just evidence of that. The force buy with the double AK goes nowhere but a bomb plant. And now they have a near full eco. VP, no more SMGs. They're building up bank. They're building up faith. And they're only a couple of rounds away from OT. Kinder's going to start strong in middle. The rest of Astralis sat outside of the B site and not for long. They will be making their entrance to it. Smokes and flashes going over the top. CZs and P250s running them up. And they need these opening kills in order for it to waterfall, but nothing in their favor. It's all Virtus Pro. 13 rounds, five alive. And here it is for Astralis. Oh my God. Okay, so, right, now this is never. this is the rifle round that you've got. This is the chance that you have to stop this game going to overtime. If you don't win this this if you don't get a bomb plant here vp we know they love to grind and the grind has only just begun yeah that's the thing about this vp war machine they have got the tenacity they've got the resilience we know they've got that in spades and so now the ball is in Astralis's court. Jame here in Connector. Once again, a very important <gasps> swing fight. See. And he's just missed this timing. Oh, Majisk. Now in a prime position to steal a kill away. Jame, no idea. Shot in the back and one hell of an opener to get away with. A five on four and VP, their entire game plan now thrown into disarray as they're rotating players between either side. Not the man you wanted to lose. Jame has got to watch from beyond the grave as the four remaining players on his team try to keep this game soldiering on. The amount of rounds Jame has been able to play Play that position and get back out to A before Astralis punish him. Not this time. Not in the most important moment in the map. Four on five. The read is there. VP have numbers in the right bomb site. They are fully stacked, fully set up, ready to go. Astralis just around the corner. 40 seconds and no warning. There's the Molotov. Now they're going to start to go. One flash is all they'll need. And the entry's there for Majisk. It starts to tumble apart for Yakinda. One kill from him. One man left on the bomb site. And Kicker can't find the headshot. Finally dropping oh. the bomb. 25. Dupree is here. And he needs support out from the short side. Bobski's running, trying to get close. And VP are not giving away these kills. Not giving the fight. They win another. It's only Bobski. They can hide in the smoke, but they don't need to. 14 rounds, and VP win every fight on the A site. What a stack. What a cool. What a win. Yeah, they might have dealt with Jame early on, but you still feel his influence in the server. He makes the call. He says, boys, look, we're going to all in this A bomb site. If they come A, we are ruining Astralis' day. And that is exactly what happens. It's like Jame can see into the future. Oh, the full 30 rounds in the VP. Why would they let go of the baton now? They're ready to drag it into extra time. Yeah, as mentioned, a war of attrition after all. Astralis coming in with this cobbled together force. Four Galils, a Deagle on Glaive, and that is the extent of it. They're taking this mid control once again. Uh, it's pro very, very backed up, leaving nothing to chance here. They're playing reserved in these bomb sites, knowing that the buy from Astralis is going to be lacking. And with how they lost Jame in the opener in that last round, they don't want to repeat that here. He's instead looking to take some of these longer fights versus the Galils versus the Deagles. Astralis, you don't get these freebie openers anymore. They've got a lot of real estate up here towards A. And so the penny's going to start to drop. The Virtus Pro are just playing passive back in these sites. And 
very reactively to what Astralis are doing in this round. Yeah, one thing that might be good for Astralis is the amount of times they've gone A and VP haven't had the warning. Don't get me wrong, VP have had the stacks, they've had the reads, but they've never really known about the A plays until they're happening, until maybe five seconds before. You're not getting this deep, long spot that James now going for. He's not had that in previous rounds. So if that continues, if VP don't get this info early, it's still going to be a 2v5. There's still hope for Astralis here. 30 seconds, the smoke's starting to come in. James is being pushed out by a Molotov. He's very low. Your Kinder gets a one for one at long, but Astralis are closing the gap. Oh, James smiting Dupree on the cross, and now James going aggressive. When James is throwing himself into the fight, you know he's believing, but instead, swept oh, aside no. by Bobski, who's trying his best to hold on for Astralis. Has Bobski just delivered them the chance they needed? Buster and Sanji left in a two-on-two -two at the 30-round mark. A retake in the A site and a low HP glaive, so a lot of pressure now on the shoulders of Zip. That first oh, peak no. misses, and glaive is a Dead man, Zipniks left in the clutch. They're pressuring him. They can't get the kill yet. Oh. Zip dead after one. And I think there's time for the defuse after all. Sanji's on it. Vertus Pro looking to carry this through to OT wow. after all. We run it back again in overtime. Astralis, they've had chances, they've had opportunity, but they've not been able to get it over the line yet. And now we find ourselves in OT. This is where Vertus Pro often do their best work. Yeah, I was going to say, what powers this war machine? Is it opponent's rounds? That's what it feels like. The, the further away, the closer Astralis are to closing the map, the more dangerous uh, Vertus Pro seem. So is that going to be apparent here in overtime where all the money's out the window? But everyone's orping. We've got two orbs per team. Astralis barely one of them in regulation. Money was a, a factor for sure, but now they're throwing caution to the wind. You kind of flashed off with that AWP, and Dupree now owns the angle. Both secondary orpers right now yeah. taking control. Interesting to note, right? We didn't really see many T side orbs yeah. for Astralis in regulation. Well, now we've got Glaive and Dupree donning theirs when we hit overtime. Glaive scoped up into the wards of this A bomb site, hoping that he's going to get given an angle. But with how VP is set up, no one needs to offer any anything up to these AWPs on the T side. Yeah, even more info on A as well, right? Like James in the toilets. We haven't really seen that this a lot. Well, this we, So we're going to have like all the orcs clash in yeah. one go potentially. It looks that way. Like they're faking. Me. They could always drop down lower. That's the, the fear here for VP. They've got three guys down on that B bomb site. Bomb is going to be joining Astralis as well. Glaive is faking out the toilets, throwing util, but that will only last so long. It will only sell so much. The kill, however, will have a lot more impact. Yakinda is dead in the water, and it's up to Jame with the Orb on A, going to be left to retake. Here's that flash into the monster, and Buster holding strong. Meanwhile, Bobsy has got an entry. The Orb runs in through short, and it gets cut into pieces. Oh. AWP's up close. Somehow, Bobsky saves the day, and Sanji's all that stands in the pit, trying to put up a stop. He can't. Bomb plant should just come in with second to spare, and Jamie is trying to go for the nuclear play. Oh my god, look at big Jamie go out into oh. the site, tries to run them down. Majisk is there and sees it through for Astralis. Oh, it's always the way, man. When you play VP, that one round will lose you for what feels like yeah. an eternity. Then you get into overtime and you're able to get it up on the board. You need to do something with this confidence, right? You know what VP are like. You know how this entire game, how the entire history of VP has gone. And it is often these very drawn out comebacks. Yeah, you get the first in OT. You've got to keep finding successes. You got to keep it coming in while the going's good. Yeah, I mean, in regulation, Harry against VP, round leads almost mean nothing. Well, in OT, it's even less important. It's simply just about getting four out of six. Forget the halves, forget three O's, forget two ones, it doesn't matter. So Astralis are focused on the here and the now. One AWP this time around for VP. Astralis will keep theirs. Certainly can afford it. VP not quite as much, but 16K and MR3 takes a lot of the pressure off of your shoulders. Kick has been spammed out on B. The Orb is looking for this pick. Dupree's seen a jumping player. He knows what's going on, but Yakinda doesn't want to be at the uh, brunt of that AWP once again, so out he goes. Glaive looking for the cross on A as well. That was who took down Yakinda last round, but not looking for it this time. Yakinda re-aggresses, and Bubsky keeps the pressure on a B. He's nearing 30 kills. 
He's been keeping players here. In fact, there are four on lower right now for Virtus Pro. Kick it, deciding to walk his way back up. And Yukinda can't afford to get aggressive here and give up the trick. Yeah, Yukinda's spot at long is, is so important. And really, he, he doesn't have a tremendous amount of support. It's not even like this bait and switch setup because his teammate in the site is having to worry about oh. toilets. So Dupree takes that peak, kicker. Oh, this timing. No! no! Runs out, back turned, and Glaive's going to remove him. Oh, Jane gets up and is already in the site with this orb trying to tango. It takes two. Magisk on the receiving end. Jame has opened this up back into a three on four. Virtus Pro here on the rotations and a full post plant set up out of Astralis. They've lost so many of these rounds. We're having a fight in the sites. Well, finally, they're given room. They're given a chance to back up and play around this bomb. And look at the results. The proof is in the pudding here. Jame can't find a thing. It's Astralis taking a second in overtime. Another one of these faster rounds, finding success in towards the A-bomb site. I think Dupree and his impact on that AWP cannot be understated enough. It kickstarts that entire play up into A. The whole reason that Kicker is feeling the pressure to take that first swing over at the short side is because they've just lost this long control. Yeah, that's such a sad timing as well, right? He hears the players running to his left going up A. He thinks he has the backstab, but more players even later from that B fake earlier on. We've got a five-man boost here in the last round, and it might get a kill, but not quite. Glaive, close shot to the jumping player on B, and that's info for Virtus Pro. If they hear that orb shot, they should start to realize we have a little more room, guys. If you were already pushed up, take a couple of steps forward. No one will. They don't want to throw caution to the wind and give Astralis a pick. Remember, after that boost comes in, there's one player who's floating, who's able to take some space. And so VP, scared of that, go back to the A-bomb site. Jane with the orb, sitting very passive as far as it goes for him. And now just one orb. Dupree's gone back to the rifle. Glaive's been doing the Lord's work with this weapon. And even though he won't get the opening kill, they're going to look elsewhere, inside of the toilets. James sat deep on the short side, and this A-site really has been a means to an end for Astralis here in overtime. VP might be forced into yet another retake if Astralis have their way. Zip is faking B, although without a lot of utility left up. And Astralis is just waiting to get deep long with that deep, deep smoke. Yeah, in regulation, right? VP weren't really taking many liberties in terms of map control, and yet they still oftentimes had the read as to when to pull these players up in A. As we've hit overtime, they're playing a lot more, you know, set in stone, right? We haven't had a lot of these early rotations. We haven't had these early stacks. This round's no exception. They've kept all three down on the B site as Astralis are leaning in towards oh. A. Will this decision to oh, keep no. B stacked be the reward for Virtus Pro? No! Instead, all three players are just blowing out the water. B crumbles in spite of everyone left there. Wow. And Astralis, they go on flawless on that first no, no. half of OT. Now they're just one away from winning this map once again. Yeah, it comes down to them. It doesn't come down to VP, right? We talked in regulation when they had that anti-eco of 15 rounds. We said, Astralis, they, they need to close. This is their best opportunity, and they couldn't do so. A lot of that came down to their own buys. They had two two out of their last four rounds for eco. Their, their last round was Galil's. You know, now that the money is no longer a factor, Astralis getting to bleed VP for all it's worth. The orb finding kills, fakes down on the top site, and even though VP keep everyone on lower there like you said absolutely torn apart boost up on b quickly but as quick as it comes as quick as it falls it gets spotted by your kinder coming through the tunnel and in fact vp will construct their own boost to look for a pick this has been good in regulation but dupree has also been pretty aware is he gonna hear He's at oh, least bro, yeah. Dupree has been the guy cancelling this and boost possibly. out. And, and everyone right now is oh. so cognizant of this possibility. Everyone in this site is considering VP are going to construct this boost to try and take an opener. Once again, it's this same Molotov set up down to Monster, hoping that this forces players into your crosshair on the boost. So but it, it hasn't done that yet. Ikinda hoping to catch this one. We'll get dropped by Dupree, who is once more ready for that boost play. Magisk, in the meantime, is holding on to top mid, and his position is enabling a three-man stack down on the B site. Yeah, and they're going to go. VP are just going to commit. Why not? 
throw caution to the wind. Kickers just walked through. He doubles back. The smoke denies that. And yeah, just a note on that boost. It's not for your kinder to be getting a kill. It's for Jame to get Zip on Monster with the AWP. And he's, he's done it again. The first time they did that Molly play, Jame got a kill. He's done it once more. So VP have kept things even. And Astralis, are they rotating out? They're setting back in the pit, but they're still keeping three here as VP recommits. Yeah, no reason to rotate once again because of Magisk over here in middle. So the triple B stack, it's a three on three to decide if this game carries on. Bobski's blinded and takes Kicker out of the round. Okay. Time is becoming a problem. Glaive still alive, hoping to deny bomb plants, but they will look to get it down. They will look to get it planted. Magisk arriving on the short oh. side, dead at the hands of Sanji. And so for Glaive, no he's way. peeked through the smoke, Buster deletes him. Astralis might have had everyone in the right place, but there's no stopping VP in those last second executes when they get the kills like that. So painful, man. Like, there's never a second in that round where Astralis don't know what's going on as well. Like they were so ready for that triple, uh, for the, the recommit, the triple B stack. Everyone's there. The clock comes down to five seconds and then that pit play gets mollied off. He can't do anything. There's no way back in. There's no way to deny the bomb plant through the wood. And so 18 to 16 VP hold on. It's getting stressful for Astralis. They're not out of the woods yet. They know that better than anyone. They conceded the lead in regulation. They don't want to do it again in overtime. Two more chances and all the money in the world to do it. Full focus for the next two minutes here. Even a blink at the wrong time can put you off. Double long setup is nice. But are VP going to walk right past Right? Them? It's different, right? You haven't seen this yet of your VP. You haven't seen it out of Astralis, and yet they are still somehow bypassing the double long hold. Oh, my. <laughs> this could be brutal, right? There is a world where VP get into A before Astralis are even aware. They're going to start to hear the footsteps now. The long hold will net a kill onto Kicker, and Glaive is having to come back in, but he's molotoved out. The site is lost. Virtus Pro have got a bomb plant here. They might be a man down, but they can set up. They can, they can play post plant around this bomb, and maybe that still leaves them with enough of a chance. I just can glaive. They were lost to the, uh, the, hell, the realm of time over here at long. Thanks to that Molly now clearing, Magisk is able to move okay. back in. Zip with another kill. Sanji and Jame left in this one in a two on four. That bomb starting to become a They're bit of a it. problem. They are on the defuse. They are sticking it. The shots aren't oh. connecting. You gotta get the kill and they 